My name is Luis Rosado. I'm in the biology department, as Christy Lynn said, in, at Worcester State University. And I've been using Visible Body for about six months now. So I wouldn't consider myself a super user or um, a, a, an expert, but I certainly have um, used it extensively for the past six months. Um, and so I guess for today, um, what I'd like to do is share a little bit about how I'm using the courseware and uh, how I've integrated it into our LMS, which is Blackboard. Um, and so I guess I'll start by sharing my screen. And well, before I get started, I also want to thank everybody for making it today. I know that this is a busy time in the semester for everybody. So I appreciate you guys uh, um, coming out. Um, so if you are unfamiliar with courseware, this is sort of where your landing page is and where you will see all of your courses. So uh, as you can see, I have a couple of uh, human biology courses and I've also a previous course that I taught over the summer that was a uh, an anatomy, anatomy and physiology course. And so the, some of the key things I want to kind of point out right away is that um, Visible Body does have textbook correlations that are specific for whatever textbook you're using. And so, for example, the textbook that I use is the Martini Fundamentals of Anatomy and Physiology textbook. And they have textbook correlations for all the major um, uh, textbooks that we you see, the, the Mary of text, and a whole list of other ones that uh, a, a lot of professors use. And what you would see if, if you clicked on this uh, correlation is the content in Visible Body organized by in units based off of the, the chapters in the textbook. And so you can see that it has, you know, all of these units set up to correlate that way. And which is nice, it's, it's very helpful. Within each of these chapters, you, they also have kind of a structure of different modules and assignments, as well as practice quizzes and already established quizzes, graded quizzes within each of these units. So what I typically do is I would take this course and essentially just make a copy of it and name it whatever I, I want. It's, this is, would be sort of the title of the course for that semester or whatever the, the course I'd be teaching and sort of personalize it for my class. And so this is one of the things that I, I kind of want to really shine the light on here is that you know when I first started using visible body it was it seemed a little bit overwhelming and there seemed to be a, a pretty steep learning curve that uh, kind of kept me from really diving in too much and I think the two things that helped me get over that learning curve quickly was customizing the courseware to how I wanted to organize it and also to my teaching style and also integrating it heavily into the LMS. So I'm going to try to show how I did both those things and sort of got me over that learning curve initially. So I first use Visible Body over the summer for uh, the second semester of an AMP course, so AMP2. This was a fully online asynchronous course over six weeks. And so um, the way that I organized that course, essentially I deleted all of the files for the first set of chapters, one through 15 from the Martini text and just kind of optimize each chapter into these lab assignments. And so, um, you know, the, the idea here was to really 
customize it, change it to a way that uh, made sense to me. And so that's one of the great things about Visible Body is that you can alter pretty much everything in here to fit the way that you like to see things, the way that you like to teach and organize your content. So uh, that's essentially what, I, what I've done here. And then in the fall for this semester, what I'm currently teaching is a human biology course that is a full si human systems um, course that's covered in one semester. And many institutions have a similar uh, course that com you know looks at the entire human body in one semester in instead of the, the uh, two semester A and P one A and P two course. And so for this uh, kind of organization, I, I did it in a slightly different way where I created lab units and within each lab, I created a whole list of tasks. Uh, I'll talk about each of a couple of these in a little bit more detail in a second, but um, a list of tasks that led to some practice quizzes that then lead to a graded quiz. So in each lab unit, uh, my students have a graded quiz component and they also have an in-class assignment component. And this is what you uh, might think of as if you had, say, like a lab manual that you had your students purchase for the class. And within each unit, there were pages that you had them um, tear out and fill out during the in-class portion of lab and then hand in the, the following week and that would be sort of their lab handout. This in-class assignment, which I will show a little bit later, acts as that in this uh, class, the human biology class. And so uh, this is sort of the basic setup of visible body and the way that I've integrated it into Blackboard um, is by linking every assignment from Blackboard out to Visible Body. So here's my Blackboard page for the Monday Lab of Human Biology. And it's, at, as many Blackboard users know, primarily we use this 15 week sort of template uh, for a full semester course. And um, what I've done within each of these weeks is created a sort of a checklist that allows my students to link out of Blackboard directly into Visible Body. And so if you notice that this list is organized exactly the same way as I had it in Visible Body. And so what the student will do is come to the weekly folder. These weekly folders I enable on the Sunday of the upcoming week, and they can see the, the list of tasks to accomplish for that week. Now these first two are downloadable files that they will need to fill in during class, and then um, the rest of these are interactive sort of applications that come with the courseware. And then there are a series of practice quizzes that lead to their graded quiz component. And what I tell my students from the beginning is it, this list is supposed to help you <laughs> stay on task. And if you see a link that is in blue and does not have a due date behind it, you do not have to turn it in. So anything in red that has a due date, it is a graded item. So uh, this makes it very clear for them. Uh, the feedback that I've gotten from these checklists is that they really appreciate being able to see, okay, yeah, this thing I need to do, and this is the due date by which I need to do that. So I'll come back to these assignment tabs within Blackboard in a second, but um, this is the overall organization that I like to use for my human biology class, which incidentally, um, like many of us uh, in this um, current situation that we're in, uh, this class is a blended class where I have split up my labs into 
to the to a group A group B model. And so my students know which group they are based on this pre-assigned grouping and they alternate being face to face with me uh, on a weekly basis. So on um, week one group A is with me and then group B is watching or zooming in remotely. And then on the uh, following week, group B is with me face to face and group A is zooming in remotely. And so the way that this works and the way that I, the reason that I really like the versatility of visible body is that when my students come to class, they, for example, have already uh, downloaded their in-class assignment and I'll just link out to what that looks like. So these are fill inable PDFs that the students can uh, type in their name here and um, work through this lab just as if they would uh, in a, a fully in-person class working with models and working in a, in a fully uh, in-person lab. And so these are the handouts or the lab activities that they would be working on in class and that they turn in in Blackboard. So if you saw here this lab one in class assignment folder, this is where they would submit that PDF with all their answers and I would be able to then grade it um, and, and give them a grade for it. So with all of these assignments, I give them typically a week to complete them. They complete the in-class assignment. I have some other tasks for them to do throughout the week. Uh, they take their exam based on the task list uh, above. And essentially that's how I, I use Visible Body through Blackboard. Now, the way that I um, use it sort of to teach is by, because I have the in-class assignment already listed in the task list and that they can download, I, I give them an outline that kind of gives the main topics of the day. They're essentially the SLOs for that unit, the student learning outcomes. And then using the anatomy and physiology app that is accessed through this, what I've called active reading modules, they can use this list of uh, topics to actively fill out the, the PDF. Oh, and additionally, what I do is, is I have, uh, what I create, uh, what I do is I create a, a Zoom but a group, breakout group where people that are with me in person are connected with students that are um, watching remotely in what I'm calling Zoom buddies. And they work together via Zoom on these in-class activities. So it allows me to uh, present a lab a week to the entire class rather than uh, alternate you know, present the lab to group A and then the following week present the same lab to them you know, to group B. So they can work on it together within that time, that time period. At any rate, um, the uh, anatomy physiology app is what I like to think of as the, the lab manual for the course. This is where a lot of the content resides for each of these units. And the reason that I call it active reading, and this sometimes takes a second to load up, but because it, it's an interactive 3D model kind of format for the content. And so let's take, for example, the, um, the axial and appendicular skeleton. So if, they're you know, working on their in-class assignment, they can follow along the active reading. And all that means is that the anatomy and physiology app opens up, they have a sort of summary about the unit that they're on, 
they can use this um, bread, trail of breadcrumbs or this task list here to progress through the content. And then what I have my students do is use the, this model and the text that is associated with that, in, that model or the information that goes along with the axial skeleton versus the appendicular skeleton to work on their labs. And so uh, that's what they do during class. The way that I teach is that in the beginning of the class, sorry for all the clicking, is I will go through and have an agenda for the, the key topics that I want to touch on before I cut them loose. And this gives me the opportunity to sort of talk about the important relevant topics, um, give all, you know, all those anecdotes that we've built up over the years about different ways to remember this and all the, the, the mnemonics that we, we use for remembering all the carpals and the tarsal bones. Uh, this gives me, gives, us the op gives me the opportunity to present that information to them before um, I, I cut them loose. And so uh, I think this is a, a great way for that instruction. And essentially I do the same thing. I go in here and I point out, okay, so you know, what, what is the difference between the axial and the appendicular skeleton? I point out the, what makes you know, the different classifications. And then I continue along that list highlighting these essential topics and telling my amazing jokes, of course. <laughs> Um, and so that, that's essentially how I run the class. And once I've done my little preview at the beginning, then they break up, I break them up into their Zoom groups and they can work on their assignment. And then along with how customizable the content is, which I, I've, I've shown already, the other really great thing is how customizable the quizzes are. And so just really briefly before I cut to questions, uh, I'll show that uh, the quiz bank in Visible Body is extensive. And there are some really great features. If you're unfamiliar uh, with Visible Body, there are multiple choice type quizzes, short answer quizzes, which uh, to be honest, I have not used. I primarily use the multiple choice and the dissection quizzes, which allow the students to manipulate the 3D model to answer a question that's posed to them, like identify the, the temporal bone or something like that. And then they have to click on the, the model that, on the bone that is being asked about. You can select based on question type, the topic that you're covering that, week um, and then subtopics within each of these which, which um, kind of narrows it down. You can also go through Bloom's hierarchy and sort of set it up that way although uh, I don't really use this very much but at any rate um, what um, is really great is that you can customize the name of these labs. So each of these labs here are labs that I have created and I name them specifically to the lab unit that I am assigning this quiz to. So you can also uh, handpick the ones that you've written or other colleagues have written um, for each of these units. So just a kind of a overview of how, the, how versatile the quizzes are. The questions are the same. Uh, you can create your own questions. I uh, have not created very many because Visible Body has a huge um, library of questions. And for the most part, they're really great. Some of these are just little tweaks that I like to add to my, my quizzes. So, okay, hopefully that was, wasn't too fast and was enough of an overview about how I integrate the visible body into my LMS. And I'll stop there because I think I've gone over a little bit, but um, I'm happy to answer any questions, show any other parts of the courseware and that my LMS um, if, if, they, 
you'd like to see. Yeah, thank you, Luis. That was really, really awesome. Uh, great overview uh, and detail. We do have a question here from Lawrence. So Lawrence, I'm actually going to unmute you so that you can ask your question. <clears throat> so I unmuted you and then I think you just unmute on your end as well. Yes, I have. Perfect. Can you hear me? Yes, hi. Hi, Lawrence. Yes. Hey, how are you, Luis? Hey, good. Nice to see you. Good to see you, or, too. Or Thank hear you, because I can't really see you. I just ah, see yeah, I know. You'll get to see me some of the time. No biggie. Hope you're in your uh, Look at, you were doing work assignments with a document, and you said that it was sort of a PDF. Am I correct? That's right. Yeah. Okay. When the students get that document, have you found that they need a PDF editor for uh, completing the weekly assignments? And if so, do you have a particular PDF editor that you favor? So there, there, I have run into some issue with downloading the PDFs. Uh, every student's computer is different. They all have different PDF readers and different programs. Excuse me. And so what I've mostly done is left it up to the student to figure out how to download the PDF and be able to fill it in. By and large, they're doing pretty well with that. But if they need help from me, I'm happy to um, jump in and, and, and help them with that. And the one that I like to recommend is the Adobe Acrobat. So that's the one that I, I use. I think at Worcester State, we have that license uh, for the students, at least the, the reader, which is sufficient for them to, uh, well, the basic uh, Acrobat that is sufficient for them to be able to fill it in and save it. Oh no, Acrobat is very good but I didn't know if they were making it available. From what I had talked with Steven, it was more of uh, Adobe Creator. But I've also encouraged them because of the variety and some that are not compatible with things like Chrome or MacBooks or something else like that, to explore um, if there are some uh, shareware and you're just looking for just the terms PDF editor. Because once they put it in the text and they save it as a PDF, boom, they can then upload it. Yeah, that's, and what's great about these PDFs is that they are fillable and they've, they've all been created by a visible body and they have them for every unit. And um, so what, what I've done is, again, this is how customizable visible body is, is I, because I'm covering multiple sections in a, in a lab, I've essentially combined uh, PDFs into multiple PDFs into a single lab. And I, I also, you're also able to delete pages uh, that you don't, you're not going to cover, or if you want to focus on a certain unit, you can customize, you know, shorten the, the PDF to just cover those topics and then just make more units in your courseware. Um, so yeah, the PDFs, it's always an, I think, going to be an issue with students trying to figure out how to upload the documents into Blackboard. But um, overall, my students this semester have done a pretty good job with that. And incidentally, in, at the beginning of the semester, I also set up a couple of units that are all about training them to use Visible Body and how to link through Blackboard and how to upload PDFs before we get into a, a graded unit. So I think those are great moves. I really do. Um, being able to edit the PDF, but also giving them the intro, because I think a lot of them, especially first year or second year, they're, they're a little bit intimidated. So I think that that's a good point to give them something. Are there any YouTube uh, videos that do the same thing? Oh, yeah. Uh, visible Body has an extensive visible um, YouTube uh, video library. They have their own channel. They also, uh, if I, I'll share my screen again. What what they also do, which I think is great, is in this instructor resources course, yeah. you can follow this along. And in here, there's a, a lot of. Um, great resources for instructors and for students. You can add these to your classes uh, if you want. But over here in the frequently asked questions and troubleshooting 
there are links for instructors. And so it takes you into visible body and it has a lot of troubleshooting for instructors and students. So if students are trying to figure out how to navigate the course where it'll take them to a YouTube video specifically about that. And so um, this also is the help center for any uh, re help requests um, and Visible Body has been great about responding to these very quickly within 24 hours. Uh, I typically get a response. Students can also submit their own requests. Um, but you know, if you if you watch this video or read through this content, it's not sufficient or it's not fixing your problem. Then you can submit a request, and they get back to you pretty quickly. Um, Sounds yeah. great. And so, I mean, just to kind of sh illustrate what I was talking about for the first couple of weeks. So, yeah, I have practice quizzes that that are not for grade. Um, so that's out of order for some reason. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, a lot of content up front for them to sort of get familiar, the registration instructions, how they link to the courseware. Um, and then the first unit that I go over is sort of the um, anatomical terminology, the, um, the regions and, uh, you know, planes and it, that first unit that we typically cover in the first week of, cl of classes, I've made into sort of an introduction. So low stakes where they have to turn it in, but it's all practice for how to turn something in. And so then when we get to the first lab unit, it is, this is when it starts um, being for grade. And so by, by, the t by lab one, the majority of them are on board. They're pretty familiar with how to navigate it by, at that point. I have a straggler or two um, into the lab two, lab three, but um, you know, it, it's a lot easier to manage one or two that are struggling than you know all, all thirty of them. <laughs> so. And I just want to add too uh, to answer your question, Lawrence, about the PDFs. Um, students should download the PDF first and then they, to their device, and then they start to enter their responses in and then save it. Um, that is, I agree. That's the best way. That that way, their answers are saved because students were finding that they were just starting to type, and then they would download, and they their answers were blank. So, just yeah. to reiterate that part. No, thank you. I, as a matter of fact, that's what we had to do with uh, our version uh, because of the fact that that's what they would try to do. They try to save it. Sometimes they wouldn't even realize that uh, they still have it on the browser. And then they would try to do something and oops, it's all gone. Yeah. Yep. So that's the best way that they sent, uh, save it first. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Thank you. You're welcome. And I see another question here from Kevin. So Kevin, I'm going to unmute you as well. There we go. So Kevin, you just have to unmute yourself as well. Hi there. Thank you for everything. Uh, all the great information, Louise. Uh, I was wondering if you're able to link your uh, graded quizzes in from Visible Body into your Blackboard gradebook. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, no. At, at this point, the uh, LMS integration with Visible Body is limited to uh, light integration with Canvas. Is that right, Chris Elin? So the um, gradebook integration that we have so far is just to um, export. So I can actually, for student confidentiality reasons, I'll share my screen and share my gradebook uh, with you. And I'll show you exactly how you do that. Um, but you're right, Luis, the integration so far is with the light integration with Canvas. Um, but that doesn't include the gradebook either. The gradebook here um, at this point works the same way for all LMS systems. So if I'm in my gradebook here, can you see my screen okay? 
Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I know ex exactly where you are. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So at the top right corner, there's an export CSV button and I can choose my LMS here. I can choose Blackboard. And when you click on this, it's just going to download a file for you here in the bottom uh, left corner of the screen. It does give you a little note here about an added column to add in your student's ID number. So there's a couple of uh, steps here for that, but it is kind of nice so that you do not have to go one by one for all of the grades. Awesome. And that's the integration that we do offer right now. Are you taking advantage of that, Luis? I am, and it's actually, um, if you set up the graded quiz in Visible Body in, in correctly, where you have allotted points and um, for each quiz, and in a way that when it's exported through this export function in Blackboard, it codes each quiz in the correct way for Blackboard so that when you upload the CSV file into Blackboard and you, well, you have to use the usernames for each of your students and put that into the Excel. But once you've uploaded that, the code for each assignment is read by Blackboard and assigns the, the subsequent points. So you don't have to go back and assign the points that you've already, reassign the points that you've already assigned. So it's not, Full, full integration where it, it will synchronize automatically it, like uh, Mastering AMP or it does or something. I don't know if you're using um, that one, Kevin, but um, that integration is synchronized with, you know, grades, you just click a button. But um, this is a really great way of workaround for integration. Now, the other you know, sort of the way that I've integrated it is how it, with those checklists so that the student can click on the link and it'll take them straight to the, the quiz. They can do the quiz and, but I, I later have to pull those grades over into Blackboard and upload them, but. Sure. No, this is, this is great. I, I, we use Blackboard as well and we've just started using Visible Body as a requirement. We switched uh, from Kevin Patton's big bundle uh, to OpenStax and Visible Body. Mm -hmm. So we've cut costs a, a, a lot. I mean, we went from like $400 to like $50 for our students. And, and so far, I'm only in about the sixth week of, of really using it. Uh, and integrating it. And I found the same issues. I, I with the, the PDFs and being able to type in. So what I've done is created the, the drop boxes in Blackboard and just have my own Word document that I've basically created from that. That's how I kind of circumnavigated the, the PDF <laughs> issue because it's the same problem with a lot of my students are, are just, it's, you know, Word or, or Google Docs or, or PDF, I give them those three options and however they get it turned in, it seems to work. So, um, but yeah, the, the grade book, that's, that's awesome. So what I do is, is include the quiz, they take the quizzes and then um, I include that as part of their visible body lab assignment. So when I create their lab assignment, one of the, the last thing they do as part of their assignment, because they are nominal points, but it does prepare them. So it's part of their score. And I was just going into the grade book in visible body and just kind of like scrolling through and, and seeing who had done them and checking them off. And yeah, I, I didn't, I seen the export see it, but I didn't even think to click it and see what would happen <laughs> and yeah that's awesome <laughs> duh you know <laughs> anyway so yeah it's this is perfect because it's it's a do or do not type of thing for me at, at this point the quizzes if they do them they get the credit as part of their score for their lab assignment right. uh, so this is great uh, the excel sheet because then i could just see yep uh, they're they're filled in and that's that's you know that's what I need to see. So thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. You're welcome. I know. And that's what this is for. Just kind of uncovering tips and tricks you, you didn't know were there or, or yet oh, yeah. to learn. 
I find stuff on here all the time and I'm like, oh man, I wish I had known that, you know, two months ago when I was setting up the course. <laughs> well, the thing is too, it's pro I mean, a lot of times I work with professors and we've gone through so much at once that over time when you really get into it is when you really start to retain it and really start to, like you had mentioned, Luis, um, as you do it, that learning curve just becomes full circle. Yeah, for me, it was customizing it. That, that's what really helped me is being able to name everything how I wanted to name it and, mm -hmm. and, and s organize it in a sequence that uh, made sense for me. And a lot of these things that I do, it seems like I'm doing a lot of work for the students, but really it's for me. <laughs> so I, can, <laughs> I can keep track of what's going on and kind of keep, kind of keep things organized um, in that way. Yeah, that's a great point. Let me take a look here and see if anyone has any um, additional questions, we can certainly take them now. Let me check the chat box. And the other thing I was thinking too, Luis, if you want to, I know you touched a little bit on the quizzing. So if you want to go in and actually, if we don't have questions for a moment, we can dive in a little bit more onto how you actually would edit that quiz question or quiz. Sure. So, I think if you're a new user or if you're looking to use this, you know, in the future, the quizzes might be a little confusing because you saw that I had this quiz bank and I have all these quizzes that I made. And in the course, you, you saw that I have, you, you can see that I have a, a sort of a, a graded quiz line here. So this was the trick for me is that when I, when you click on, on this quiz link that takes you to the graded quiz for this uh, lab, this is where you would populate the quizzes that you create in the quiz bank. So by editing this link, by going in here, oh, it won't let me do it now because yeah, um, the assignments have already been, um, past the deadline, but let me see if I can find one that's live. So if I go to student, but this is another thing. If you go to student preview, you can see the units that are available to the student right now and the ones that are, that I'm still, that are yet to come. So let's see. Actually, this is, why is it? I think this one's live. Okay, so you can see that this is a quiz that I created. This is, I named it for this lab specifically, for this class, for this lab. And when you go into the edit box, oh, it won't let me do it here either. You know what, what I have to do, Christy Lynn? Is it, does it have to be one that's has not been assigned at all? Yeah, so it's not um, active for the students yet. Okay, right. Okay, so right here. Uh, these are the quizzes that these, links take you to the quiz. These are the quizzes that Visible Body has populated in this quiz link. And when you go to edit it, you can create the quiz details, all the assignment details in terms of due date, when you want to release it, what folder it's going to go in. So this is another part of the how to customize your, your quizzes. You can move things around. This is where you will assign the point system. And this point the points that you assign here, if you're using Blackboard and you export it with that CSV function, it will tag these points at the end of that file name that tells Blackboard how many points it's, it's worth. Um, you can uh, show the grade in the Visible Body Gradebook as a percentage or as points. I typically do it as a percentage. I give my students two attempts on every quiz. They can keep their best attempt. I always time my quizzes. I give them 30 minutes or so for each quiz. And then that you can have you have some feedback options here for you know helping the student know where they went wrong, what questions they got wrong. You can uh, fine tune these to your teaching style. Um, but here at the bottom here, where you have edit assignment content, this is where you would go would you click and it would take you to the quiz bank. So that's 
this is the, the list of quizzes that are available for any quiz link that you want to add quizzes to. So now, right now, the two that are selected are uh, these two here that Visible Body populated already. Now, if you've gone through and created your quiz already, you can select it here and add it to that lab assignment. So I think I have a endocrine system quiz here. So I can add these two quizzes under the endocrine system graded quiz assignment link in my course. And then it would just populate those uh, in that uh, assignment. Okay, so that, that's the, how to kind of assign the grade, the graded quiz, but in the quiz bank, if I come back to the quiz bank, I think I can. What do you do in your free time? I stalk people. Oh, okay. I like to swim. I know. <laughs> Lauren, so we can hear. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's I okay. I a message. <laughs> okay. Um, I apologize. I'm so that, sorry. That happened to me at one of the, the uh, office hours too, because, um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> at, at, any, at any rate, yeah. <laughs> um, if you want to say create a dissection quiz on, let's say, um, let's just stick with the skeletal system. And it sometimes just takes a little while. And then you want to specifically look at the appendicular skeleton. Now, visible body shows uh, eight, well, the list shows 18 different quizzes that you can select from for, to sort of start your, your quiz. Uh, let's see, uh, let's do the femur. And what this, this little clone option allows is for you to, to copy the, make a copy or a clone of that quiz. And this is where I would, highly recommend that you have sort of a naming structure set up when you're creating your course and you you use you, you stick with that uh, nomenclature for so that you can easily find your your quizzes when when you're um, when you're assigning them as i showed a, a second ago so let's say this is going to be for lab 66 whatever or 65 um, and you save it and what it does is it populates that quiz that you just cloned at the top of the overall list so we're back to the main page where 507 quizzes exist your quiz that you just created is at the top of that list you then can go into that quiz and edit that quiz once you've cloned it and named it whatever you you want to name it then you can edit the quiz here's where you would add more questions you can select the same way you selected the quiz type you can select the content here we're looking at the skeleton we're looking at the appendicular skeleton specifically you can go for the blooms level if you if you wish and then you can select Oh, I want to add the uh, tibial tuberosity or um, what else, the, you know, whatever else you want to add to the appendicular quiz. And so let's just select a bunch of these. And then these will get added to the list of questions that are on that quiz. And so if you look at this list of questions and you're going through and, oh, I don't like that question, or I didn't cover that, or I want to create a, a whole different question about that. I can delete that question. You can preview the question if you want. Here's what a couple of things that I highly suggest are randomizing the order of the questions and then also pooling questions. So uh, you can pull, I always pull 10 questions out of a quiz. And so it randomly selects 10 questions out of this pool of questions for each student. So each student will get a separate quiz, a different quiz. Um, 
Susie Q can't call Billy and say, what did you get on question three? Because they have different question threes, okay? And then you just save the quiz, and then you have that Lab 65 femur landmarks dissection quiz that's ready to be added to your course. And so all of these uh, P in the brackets here, that just means that it's from, uh, it's just indicating it's a quiz with pooled questions. And um, yeah, as you can see, I, I recommend that you do that for all of your quizzes. Now, if your institution has incorporated visible body in uh, as a site license or multiple instructors are using the visible body, here's one of my colleagues, Latifa, she is considering using it. Um, but if you had, a, say, a list of uh, lab instructors, say, five or 10 lab instructors that are all using visible body in your institution, they would all be listed here and all their quizzes that they've created would be listed here. If you were trying to um, standardize the quizzes across labs or some, something like that, I know that a lot of institutions, a lot of programs are trying to do that sort of thing, you can create uh, a scenario where that you have a customized quiz maker or something and then you just select on that individual and it would populate all the quizzes that that uh, author had created and then the lab instructor could go through and pick the ones they want for their lab unit so the so that's how i like to use the the quizzes um i essentially build off of the quizzes that visible body already has and i add the questions that I've, you know, from the content that I've covered. If there's a question that I want to make that I don't see in the question bank, that's when I go through and I would create my own question. And it works very similar to creating your own quiz. Are there any questions about that? That is a really great overview. Thank you. Let me come in and look. Um, does anyone have any questions here about what Luis just went over in the quiz bank um, or anything from today at all? We have time for maybe one, maybe two more questions. So please feel free to raise your hand and I can unmute you. Yeah, thank you, Kevin and Lawrence. We really appreciate your questions today as well. Okay. I'll keep talking as a uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, if there's any last things, uh, Luis, that you want to share. Yeah, the last thing I want to share is that, um, you know, I'm still learning visible body and I'm building on what I've learned. And, you know, for next semester, I'm uh, creating a couple, uh, a brand new course with visible body as well. And I'm trying to get it very specialized for the oc occupational therapy program. Um, but where I want to take this in future courses is by really enhancing the teaching experience for the labs, where I can utilize the software more for teaching. So what I've seen other presenters at office hours do is use, um, sometimes they record themselves doing tours of different models into little lectures that they post on their LMS that the student must watch before coming to lab. And it gives sort of an overview, um, sort of a flip model for prepping for class. The other way is by teaching with a smart device and um, writing right on the smart device as you're instructing. Um, and so those are some of the ways that I wanna try to use this software in the future sort of to build on the, the skills that I've learned already and sort of move it to the next level that way. So there is versatility in that realm too and then uh, using it to for instruction. Absolutely and you know what I actually can share my screen Luis on my iPad and I can show a little bit about what what you mean by uh, creating like the presentation. Yeah the yeah. augmented reality is also pretty cool if you. Yeah yep. Yeah. Let me share my Atlas app. 
Okay. Can you see my iPad yet? Maybe not. Not yet. I'm going to try sharing it a different way. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes. Perfect, alrighty. So um, this is the one of our specific apps in that does come along with courseware. This is Atlas. Um, it's kind of our flagship app and it's kind of like our virtual lab setting, if you will. And I'm just gonna open up one of our uh, models here and I'm using my um, touch screen to move the model around from side to side. Um, what I can do is I can customize this view and I can select parts of it. I can um, hide parts of it. I can add to it. Uh, whoops, go back here. Um, I can add to it or, you know, just really get it set up to show exactly what I want this view to have. And I can prep it essentially for my upcoming lecture. So I can go to the bottom right here and I can save my view. I'm just going to save it locally for right now. Um, we'll call this a test. And then what I can do is I can go to my main menu and we have these uh, saved items here under favorites. So this is going to show all of the favorites that I've ever saved as a view. And what I can do is I can go to tours and I can create um, what we call a tour, but you can think of it as like a presentation. So I can start to create my new tour and I can choose any of these um, in any order that I'd like and I can save it. So then I'll call this a test. And now when I'm ready for uh, class to begin, I'll just open up this particular tour. And Luis, is this what you were thinking of? Yes. Preparing yeah. for, okay. So now I have this particular view and then up at the top, I have these arrow keys. I can see that there are four views in this particular presentation. And as a professor, now I can easily move through these views that, you know, it might've taken me a little bit of time to, to build. But now for my lecture, I can go through them really easily. Yeah, and you can annotate on these, which is um, another added feature. If you wanted to stop in the middle of, the, of your lecture and point at different aspects of this model that you're on. Uh, right, exactly. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm turning on the draw tool to highlight what you're mentioning now. So I'm just going to kind of close in here on the plane that I want to focus on. But you'll see that blue area getting smaller or kind of larger around. So now I have like this area here that is my plane. So when I highlight that and I rotate the model, that is essentially going to stay in the plane that I drew on. Yep. Yeah, right. great point, Luis. I'm, um, yeah, I'm excited to, to explore this aspect of it, really. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> I'm excited to hear more about how that goes too. Does anyone have questions about that? Oh, Kevin. Um, yes. Yeah, so Kevin's question is, how did I get my iPad to mirror into Zoom? So when you're on Zoom at the bottom where it says new share or share screen, you click on the share screen and then there's an option to either um, share your iPad by AirPlay or by cable. So you can have your um, iPad connected to your computer with that like toggle, or you can just do the AirPlay. Just a, a note on that is mm -hmm. both devices have to be on the same Wi-Fi. Yes, good call. Yeah, thank you all for joining. Does anyone else have any questions? Yeah, you're welcome, Kevin. I hope it goes well. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, and if it doesn't, if you get stuck at all, please let us know. <laughs> all right, well, let me um, stop sharing my screen. I just wanna thank Luis, uh, thank you again so much for your time today. Thank you. That was a wonderful overview. Thank you, Christina. Thank you to everyone for jumping in.
and Allie too. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Allie. All right. Thank you, Louise. This Thank you, Louise. Wonderful. Yeah, this was so wonderful. It is so nice, honestly, just to see like how your course is built.